Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jay Caper and Ron Souls are here with Petland of Iowa City. Hope you're having a nice Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to one and all. As we talk pets here today and have some fun with it, we've got a new breed that, quite honestly, I know nothing about other than it's a herding dog, and that's because Ron already told me that. So we'll talk about a brand new breed we've never talked about here on the show. We have a topic, how do you communicate with your dogs? And we'll talk about beta fish and a, the food is instinct. Those are the, some of the topics we're going to talk about today. Ron, how are things going with you? Doing very good. The communicating with your dog, this is the catchphrase that you got to hear. How to talk with your dog today. Mm -hmm. There's the catchphrase. that I like it. So you, people are going to learn how to talk dog, right? Talk dog. And talk it, with your dog. Talk with your dog. And it's not going to involve barking, right? We're actually just Right, we're not going to. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> roof. Okay, roof. means that. Yes, yeah, so we're going to translate what those barks mean. No, he's going to tell you about how you can talk to your dog and um, help communicate because it can be very frustrating. You just wish you could tell your dog to stop doing this or stop doing that. But uh, sometimes they just don't understand. So we'll talk about that. Have some fun. And uh, we'll bring in the big voice guy for the amazing pet story of the week as well. And I guess just in a general sense, with the weather turning, things going well, right? You've got lots of people. We were talking about the crowds at your store. It's very busy now. Yeah, it's uh, it's always very busy. And it doesn't matter whether the, the sun is shining, the rain is coming down, the snow is blowing. Uh, everybody's always coming into Petland, and that's a wonderful thing to have. We, we're, Wendy and I are very blessed with that. You've got $5 nail trims. You also have the buy 10, get one free for the pet foods, for dog and cat food. So yeah, on all of our out. premium foods. So, you know, come on in. And if you've ever thought about changing the food or upgrading or why is there premium food? What's the difference? Come on in and we'll talk about it. And there is definitely a difference between what you're buying at the marts and the grocery store to a premium food and your dog and you will benefit from it. And what's cool is, is you don't, you're not even spending more uh, overall because uh, you're going to feed a lot less of this stuff. You're going to pick up a lot less poop, which I know is always funny, but everybody's ears just perked up right now <laughs> and said, I want some of that. And then, uh, uh, and it's better for your dog. You'll actually see the difference in their skin and coat and all that. So and instinct might be the one you want to switch to. We'll talk about that later in the show. But right now we bring in Big Voice Guy. Big Voice Guy, here he comes. Oh, look what he's wearing. A Cubs hat. I knew it. Yeah, I figured it was going to be baseball. He's a bandwagon fan. Yeah, oh my That's, Last week you were wearing a Cardinals hat. So what's the deal here, Big Voice Guy? Yes, the Cubs are doing well. Uh, it's If you're listening on Sunday, I'm curious how they did against the Nationals the past few days. We record this show on Thursdays, and we are your home for the Cubs, KXIC. Thanks, big voice guy. Our amazing pet store, if we go to Springfield, I think there's a Springfield in every state, Springfield, Ohio, in this particular case, a six-year-old German shepherd, Sasha, helped save a man's life. Michelle and Michael Baugh, their neighbor is a 75-year-old man who was recently diagnosed with dementia. He wandered from his home in the middle of the night, got lost, and was walking around outside. Uh, Sasha, the dog, was very familiar with this man and found him at about 1 o'clock in the morning in the driveway, and he was calling out for her help. He, When the neighbors heard the commotion, they came out, and Sasha was struggling so hard to get to the man that because she was behind a fence, she ended up injuring herself. Uh, they said in human terms, she blew out her kneecap because she was trying to hurdle the fence to get to this guy, but she caused enough commotion that they called 911. They were able to get him uh, taken care of, and they say it's a costly procedure to fix that kneecap, but Sasha's the hero because he's, she saved his life. He was wandering around, and now he's in a, a care facility, and uh, he again, uh, he's in assisted living, but uh, uh, could have gone a lot worse, but Sasha save the day our amazing pet story of the week love those stories it's the positively petland show here on kxic got a lot to talk about when we come back we'll talk about that new breed what's it called ron that new breed <laughs> got, gotta get your breath all sucked in bouvier de flounders bouvier de flounders all right we'll find out what that's about a herding dog and there's one at least at the time of recording at the pet store. We'll tell you about that coming up here in a little bit. Plus, how to communicate with your dog today. Talk about beta fish and instinct when we come back.
make that first thing interesting every time. And like how I would have done last week. So what was it? How did I do it? <laughs> oh, I can't. It's it was It'll with come the, to you after the show, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it was with just let the let it happen with Naturally. the with the um the background or history of the the breed. Well, we'll tease it because we want people to listen to the show to find out more about it. So okay. we'll give it a shot in three, <clears> two, <throat> one. 800 KXIC Morning Host, Jake Capron with Ron Salsrud from Petland of Iowa City. What is a Bouvier de Flounders? <laughs> We're going to find that one out. <laughs> We're going to learn how what that breed is all about. What the heck is it? But we're also going to talk about betta fish. You know those people that are looking for something different? There's a betta fish out there for you. We're going to talk about instinct dog food and how to talk with your dog today mm -hmm. without barking how to communicate with your dog interesting should be fun it's a positivity petland show 9 a.m sunday mornings on kxic perfect that's good excellent we're getting i maybe just stop thinking overthinking it because <laughs> when you you like you handed me that one yeah that was pretty uh it was on a t layer for you but it was you know kind of got you at least started with the topics and then you just were able to rattle them off and if you ever forget one of the topics you could just stop and be silent and then keep talking and i can clip the silence okay. off too all right in three two one <laughs> welcome back it's the positively petland show am 800 kxic Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock and at KXIC.com on our podcast page and on Petland's website and soon to be a new look there on the Petland website too. So check that out. Petland of Iowa City. PetlandIowaCity.com. There you go. PetlandIowaCity.com. So check it out. We are talking pets as we always do around this time and we appreciate you hanging out with us, whatever you may be doing on this Sunday if you're listening in. Happy Mother's Day. Hopefully you're enjoying it, and we will continue with our topics. The Bouvier de Flounders. It's a very rare breed that I've never heard of. Um, you've not, as far as I know, have never had it, or you haven't had it at least any time recently, and you do have one, and we're going to find out about it. What is the Bouvier de Flounders? So first we have to stump the J. Oh, boy. So it's where? French. It's got to be French. No? Belgium. Belgium. Okay, close. Is I wonder, very you close. know, the dialect there, and, and, and I'm not even telling you i'm confident on how i'm saying that probably not right um i'm sure there's so yeah so i i'm assuming that there's a fr french in there and somebody's like going that is not how you say that yeah bouvier uh, that's what got me thinking it was french but belgium that makes b-o-u-v-i-e-r bouvier 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 i like that bouvier de flounders so the jay and ron dialect <laughs> butchering butchering session yeah say it again bouvier uh Bouvet de Flanders. Bouvet de Flanders <laughs> is from Belgium. Um, so we're in that region over there. And you had just said, you know, we, you don't hear much about it. And this is interesting of why you don't hear much about it is because um, back in, let's see if they give me a year, in the looks like eight little late 1800s, um, they became more of a herding dog out there. And we're going to talk about their coat, which is uh, a significant uh quality of this dog it's a non-shedding dog but it goes way beyond that in the coat hmm. but during world war one the home of the bouvier what what how did you say it bouvier bouvier <laughs> became a, va a battlefield oh boy and so they actually got decimated during the world war one there talk about like uh, you know, inconsequential, you know, or, you know, not unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. um, so the breed's numbers dropped almost to extinction during that time. Um, those who stayed in Belgium became uh, ambulance. So those, uh, you're going to have to just fill in that word every time I say Bouvier. Bouvier, <laughs> who stayed in Belgium, became ambulance pullers, military tracking aids, wow. and other things. They are, they are a high energy dog uh, for sure. 
But then uh, they then started populating, you know, more and more back into Europe. But I mean, when you decimate something like that, it takes a while for things to come back. 1920s, sure. it came uh, into back or over into America. And then uh, we see it as it is today, kind of a thing, slowly building and all that. Um, uh, so first quality, do not get this dog if you are not looking for a very high energy dog. This guy uh, works hard and continues to work hard. Uh, they definitely were used as herders back then. Um, in fact, the name refers to herding dog in the Flounder uh, country. Mm. Uh, so that's where the name comes from. Um, pulling cards, herding cattle, guarding homes, all sorts of things like that. Uh, is is there why they were uh, mixed together to make what we see today? Sounds like they like to run. Yes. Um, and then another uh, word of caution, and I understand this on a smaller dog, is is you start training these dogs and all dogs uh, right away. There's no like, don't wait to train your dog until they're five months, six months, a mm -hmm. year that you start training today um, and they will start learning just as children start learning immediately. They just might not be capable of all the things that you're looking for right at the beginning, mm -hmm. but hang with it because the, the quicker you start, um, the more they're going to uh, take that training and internalize it uh, for the rest of their lives. So with the, say it, Bouvert, Bouvert de Flanders, uh, it is something that they cautioned or, or said, not only are you going to train when they're younger, but this is a dog you're going to continue training throughout its life. And that's what I found with poodles. Are, it's very similar. Um, I have a poodle mix at home. And if we're not training her, she's training us. And that's exactly what will happen here uh, in that this dog will uh, not like it, it'll become an irritant at times because it's trying to train you. It'll jump on you and it'll say, uh, but I want this, but I want this, but I want this. So if you are not saying sit, stay, come, go, roll, you know, all sorts of, you know, whatever you're looking to do, um, it's getting bored and it's wanting to do something with you. And so it's going to get your attention. So a really interesting dog. Now going into the coat, uh, AKC really goes into some interesting detail <clears throat> and talking about how there's two different layers to their coat, the outer rougher uh, texture coat and the inner more insulating and waterproofing hmm. uh, ability for this dog. The outer coat, they, you know, they really were cautionary and their AKC is talking about show and you know, mm -hmm. presenting the dog a lot, but they were also talking about just the functionality of that coat the rougher coat uh is meant for uh doing all that work and everything and so they said caution on cutting that off because that is its protection uh and all that well you know if your dog is laying around the house and just kind of you know you know doing its normal <laughs> dust domesticated chores i.e eating drinking pooping peeing <laughs> and and laying around and go play and fetch yeah. well it's not going to really need that so they did say you can trim it down uh to uh model the um the shape of the dog kind of a thing but you're if you trim it down too far you're going to eliminate that uh rougher coat that is meant for protection uh, and then the lower coat is not only an insulator, but it's a waterproofer for this dog as well. So this dog is, gosh, a multi-purpose dog uh, and very fascinating in, in all that uh, it was designed to do. So um, non-shedding, you know, in that case. So and so you're going to you're going to see some shed with this dog, just like we shed. They're going to shed. So you're going to see it around the house. Mm -hmm. um, the one we have in the store is black. I've seen a brindling type color. Uh, out there and then more of a tan type color as well. Uh, is this the right breed for you? Are you into uh, a lot of, you know, getting outdoors, exercise, um, getting this dog running? Um, those are the things that you definitely want to consider because this dog's going to need that kind of activity. Um, it's so a little higher maintenance in a couple of different ways. So the energy level, but as well as maintaining that coat level. 
uh, because it's a non-shedding. A lab is going to be easier on maintaining that coat because it sheds. Mm -hmm. Wait, but I don't like it when dogs shed. Well, then that's something you also need to consider as well. Um, low maintenance usually means a shedding dog, uh, but yes, you'll see it around the house. Uh, on the bigger breeds. Um, but then if you want that bigger dog, but you don't want that shed around the house, then you lean more towards these low shed to no shed type dogs. And uh, the, what's the breed? Bouvet. De Flanders uh, will be right in that class of dog. So what happens to a dog if it's a non-shedding dog and you don't get it groomed? <clears throat> Just gets long and unmanageable. Get matting. And matted and stuff, um, yeah. You know, it, in fact, though, if, some breeds, if you continue to manicure the, you know, and brush and brush and use conditioners and all that kind of stuff, mm. you can go for quite a long time. And those are the dogs you'll see at the AKC shows where the hair goes in parts along their back and goes all the way down. This one's going to be a little kinkier, but it'll, it'll still lay like that o over time if you let it go. So that's one aspect where they, you know, grow and grow and grow. Um, then there's other breeds that are meant to get matted. Um, oh, the Puli uh, is one of those. You, if you ever see a dog going down the street and you go, gosh, that dog's got dreadlocks. <sighs> That's a Puli. And what's happening is that dog mats so intensively that you just let it mat. You know, you, you can't stop it. Really? And, and what they'll do then is divide the mats when they're longer and like literally pull them apart and what it looks like then to us is dreadlocks yeah i've seen i know exactly what you're talking about too there was one just in our store and we were having a great conversation about it those dogs people get them because of that and realize that in the summertime they're uncomfortable and they'll have to lay on the air conditioner vent even when they're indoors in your air conditioning your house they're just trying to cool down because i've got so much hair so you just have to be cautious you know, with these dogs on overheating, keeping them hydrated and all that. Well, if someone out there is into having something that <laughs> other people don't have, I know some people like to get the rare things out there. And the Bouvier de Flounder, certainly when you ask somebody what kind of dog, how many times is the answer? Oh, I've got a lab. I've got a poodle. I've got a, a German shepherd. You know, those are very common uh, dogs. You don't often hear your neighbor say, I have a Bouvier de Flounders. I don't know if I've ever seen or heard of one of these. So very rare opportunity and uh, dogs at Petland of Iowa City, at least it was at the time of recording. So we wanted to talk about that. Now let's do the communicating with dogs first and then we'll get into the beta fish and instinct as we roll through the morning show or through, excuse me, through the pet show. Um, tell us about the, how to communicate with your dog. So, we, you know, we're, it's always fun in the store and I see it at my own house and, you know, your dogs are doing something and you, you know, you, you, the, we use, English to talk with our dog. Stop! No! Mm. And all that kind of thing. And realize, and we do, that they can't speak English. But you can communicate with your dog very effectively. And it's all through encouraging behaviors and discouraging behaviors. And so that's how we have to communicate and talk with our dogs. And if you stick with two principles, as long as you're, and we're going to talk about how do you communicate, but as long as you do it, frequently so over time and you continue to do it um, and, and there's repetition so that they understand patterns um, that's one key component the second component is that you're consistent don't do it one way and then do it another way or not do it at all you need to be consistent with your dog so if you're gonna you know and, and pick it you know one thing at a time don't like get i'm going to teach it to do 10 things today no one thing today and then stick with it so keep it simple i guess would be the third thing so uh those three things frequency repetition is key to training uh uh, uh, uh keep it just went out of my head consistency consistency holy cow where did that one go oh, no. and then keep it simple so how do you communicate there's three ways to communicate your, with your dog the treat scratching by the jowls and then a verbal good dog good dog or whatever you want to do to uh, say yeah this is a good thing that you're doing and the key to it is do it when they're doing what you want them to do and so we're going to start simple and then i'm going to uh, give you a little more uh, catch them when they're doing it or make them do it kind of thing and and we'll 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 
uh, stretch it into that so you understand what I'm even saying right now. All right, so uh, a simple command like sit uh, or potty training, you have to give them the treat when they're doing what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, potty training, uh, that's going to happen automatically whether we like it or not. And we can bring our dog outside and always be encouraging them to do it outside. So when they're peeing, you can give them a treat. You can scratch the jowls and you can say, good dog, good dog. All three of them are going to uh, go as, as quickly as you can to communicate with well. them. The treat is the number one scientifically proven way to communicate with your dog that what they're doing is a great thing because they want another treat. And so when they're pooing or peeing outside, give them the treat while they're doing it. And I know, well, wait, what do you mean? You know, is it's that simple? Yeah, it's that simple. In fact, if you don't keep it that simple, it gets complicated. If you wait to give them the treat till when they come back in the door, they think coming in the door is why they're getting the treat. And there are people right now going, oh, yeah, that's why my dog goes back out the door and back in the door because they want another treat. So realize your dog, if you encourage your dog right when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, then they go, oh, this is what you want me to do. Now let's bring back in those three things. Repetitive. The more you do it, they, the more they're going to see that trend and go, oh, I'm going to do it again and see if they'll give me another treat. Consistency. If you mess up on the consistency part, they won't see the trend. And so you need to be consistent. And then keep it simple. Um, it is as simple as when they're doing what you want them to do, that's when you give them the treat and the encouragement with the scratching around their jowls and the good dog, good dog. If you wait a little while later, 10 seconds, now you've messed up all that and they're not going to understand what you want them to do. They're not going to see the repetitives, the consistency, and they're going to get confused on what am I supposed to do again? I was running across the yard to you and then you just gave me the treat. Well, that might encourage them to run back to you, uh, but it's not going to encourage them to potty train. I, I hope everybody's starting to see like, Oh, yeah, you got to do it immediately when they're doing it. I, I'm starting to understand that because the dog can get confused really easily with what you're reinforcing. And this is how we communicate with the dog. Uh, so positive reinforcement is 90% of what you need to do with dogs. The, the uh, discouraging behaviors is, is a, an important part, but it is a very minor part of overall training with your dog. So now let's say, well, I want to teach my dog, let's say, to sit. And how do I do that? Because how am I going to catch my dog sitting and then encouraging it? That's a little more difficult. Well, there are some techniques you can use uh, in a lot of different ways to make the dog do what you want them to do kindly and then encourage what they're doing immediately then, uh, like what we just talked about. So for sitting, uh, what you do is you take a treat, put it in your, uh, in your uh, you know, between your uh, thumb and finger, and, and, and make sure you grab onto it. Don't let them just have it. Now you're going to go up to your dog. Um, they're looking up at you, and that's actually the stance you want. So they're standing in front of you. They're looking up at your head kind of a thing. So their head is up. You now put that treat right at their nose and push so that they go backwards. And when you do that, dogs naturally sit. I'm going to say 80% of dogs naturally sit. The other ones, you might have to pat them on the butt a little bit to make it go down. As soon as they sit and get that bottom on the floor, go sit and then give them a treat. Now you've encouraged them or you know, you've said, I love it when you sit. But the first time you do it, realize they go, I don't know why you gave me that treat. And then the next time, hey, you gave me a treat again. It's pretty cool. I'm going to, I like this, whatever you're doing. And then third time, fifth time, 10th time, 20th time, they, over that period of time, they understand that as you're doing it, they're now uh, going, oh, when I put my rump on the floor, you put that treat right in my mouth. Wait, this is kind of interesting. I'm going to try it now. And they're going to put their butt down on the ground and see if you give them a treat. Uh, you also, though, if you associate a command now and say sit, then you can say sit. They're going to go, oh, yeah, I know what this is. I put my butt on the ground and you give me a treat. And now they start, you're communicating with your dog. And you, you 
you know, kind of forced them to do the sit kind of a thing. You know, you're, you're encouraging them in natural ways to do that. And so th think through that. So it's repetitive so that they understand it uh, and they see the pattern. It's consistency. Do it every time so that they see the pattern and then keep it simple no matter what you're doing. Don't complicate this thing up. Uh, realize there's like when you do rollover, um, first you want to teach them how to lay and then you want to teach them how to roll over and then you can teach them how to play dead. And it's just putting one thing on top of another thing on top of another thing. So that's getting into communicating uh, lo a longer. Um, if you, if I'm like, like going, you, you're not getting this right now, come into the store. I'll, I'll go through it in more detail with you. I think you're it. doing a good job of explaining it. I think that makes a lot of sense. So now let's take it one step further on that and saying, okay, there's, uh, there's other things I'd like to uh, teach my dog. And some of the stuff, you're going to find random things will occur. Um, a lady was in our store, and it was about six months ago, and the, the funniest thing, she could make her dog smile. Mm. And, I, and she did it right in front of me. She goes, smile. And he lifted up his lips, and he showed his teeth. Mm. And I'm like, how did you do that? She goes, it was really random. She goes, I was in the kitchen and I was throwing away a piece of paper and I was close to the dog and I crumbled up the piece of paper and it made the crunchy sound. My dog lifted its jowls when it did that. <laughs> and he, she goes, well, that's kind of neat. And so she got another piece of paper <laughs> and he did it again. <laughs> and he goes, she, that's when she understood if I encourage him right now and put a command or a word to it, I can make him do it over and over again, even without the piece of paper. So she crunched the piece of paper and then said, smile and gave him a treat. Mm -hmm. And the dog now over, so she then repetitively did it. Mm -hmm. She consistently gave the treat every time he did it. And she keep, kept it simple. And now the dog will smile on command. Just yesterday, there is a gentleman that's looking for a husky. And, and, you know, I really love huskies and I want a husky and all that kind of stuff. And so we were talking through the breed and everything. And, you know, kind of the random thing, he goes, and I want to teach it to howl and to, you know, I make noises and all that. And I go, be careful what you wish for, because I can tell you how to do that on a husky. All you got to do is hold a husky for about five or ten minutes. They want to get down and run around. And so what they'll do is they'll start going arr, 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 and, and kind of doing a cry sound. Well, when they do that, right when they do it, give them a treat and it'll go, oh, I got a treat. What's that all about? And then, okay, so be consistent, repetitive and keep it simple. And I go, just keep on doing that every time, arr, arr, treat, you know, kind of a thing. And you can even associate, you know, oh, his original request was, I want to teach my husky how to talk. He must have watched a YouTube video or something. <laughs> and so that's what started all this. And I go, you yeah, know, be careful what you wish for because your dog's going to talk a lot. And yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the night, okay, be quiet, please, now, yeah, yeah. kind of a thing. And so, again, we found a way to naturally have the dog do something. And some of this stuff is, you know, it has to kind of happen uh, randomly. And then you go, oh, wait. I kind of like that. <laughs> now do it frequently, repeat it over and over again, do it consistently. Every time they do something, give them a reward then to do it. Keep it simple and put a word to it. Now you can have them do it on their own. So that's how you can talk with your dog. And it's powerful. The more you think through this and the more you try this with your dog, the more you're going to go, oh, I can do this. Yeah. I can do that. Get your kids doing it. If you want to see your kids more engaged with your dogs, get them into the training. And this simple concept that we talked about today is really uh, will get your children engaged with your dogs. They mentally love to be in charge. You know, you know that from when you were a child. And think of when you wanted to drive a car when you were really young and what you were dreaming about. You just wanted to be in control of that car, you know, kind of a thing and drive around and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, that same thing is occurring with your children. And you can show them how to work with the dog, being more engaged in a really positive way. Good deal. And now let's learn a little bit about the betta fish. We don't have a whole lot of time, but we can talk about the betta fish and then also the instinct food. So the betta fish is 
some a way for you to for those of you that say I don't have a pet or uh, and I'm I want to get into this but I just don't want that commitment or are you one of those people that say I am uh, I just when I was younger I had fish I loved it I'd like to bring that back into my life you might have kids I want to expose the kids into it but my life is so complicated right now I don't I remember my tank and yeah it was a little more maintenance and all that kind of stuff and I don't have that time right now how do I still get that back into my life um, and, and enjoy having a fish? There's nothing like having a fish in an aquarium and, and just watching it. And um, my tank at home, I literally love to just sit there and gaze at it and see what they're doing and make their habitat, habitat bigger and uh, friendlier for them and have live pan, plants and all that. But how do I start that process in an easy or easy way? The beta fish is a wonderful way to do exactly that. Beta fish can can uh, live comfortably in smaller environments. So you don't need those 50, 100, 150 gallon aquariums to have a beta fish. And because how they breathe uh, and function, um, they don't need all the filtration and agitation to get the oxygen back into the water and all that. So beta fish are a wonderful breed to, to get a hold of, have a nice habitat, put some live plants in there. We'll talk about that in future episodes. That increases the quality of their life with live plants. And we've got plenty of them at Petland. And you can have smaller, or you can even go bigger, a little bigger, five, 10 gallon, 20 gallon with a beta and do a lot of decorations. Make it uh, more of a showpiece on your counter rather than a bowl with a fish <laughs> kind of a thing. So you can go in many different ways with uh, a beta fish. You can start simple and move more into other things. But now think about your children. You can teach them how to take care of a life. All you're gonna do uh, in if you don't have filtration is replace half that water once a week. So you're going to take a cup and dish it out and then put more water in. We're going to talk about what you need to do that to that water before you put in in future episodes as well. But the beta is such a nice, simple way to get back into that fish hobby. Show your kids, you know, you got to feed them every day and not too much and all that kind of a thing and really get your you and your kids back engaged in the, the hobby of, of fishery um, and having fun with it. And you'll enjoy it, just gazing at it. And just think about, and I know it's gonna be sometimes short, just think about just gazing at that fish, you know, right before bed and just going, isn't this fascinating watching this life with your child? Probably is best right before they go to bed when they're starting to settle down. Because in the middle of the day, they're gonna go, okay, I've had enough, <laughs> let's go through the wall. But you can have that enjoyment of the fish and discover that together and find out that your child might be interested in different aspects of it. Ask them questions about that beta fish. And what do you see when you look at that beta fish? Well, I see it swimming, I see the blue. You see blue, it's a red fish. Well, yeah, but if you look at the gill right behind it, there's a little spot of blue. I didn't even notice that. So get engaged with your pets in this way and a beta fish is a great way of doing that. And of course you gotta name it too. So you gotta get there a, you go. You gotta have a new name for it. All right, so as we get ready to wrap up, we'll uh, give you some time to talk about, about instinct and then we'll wrap up the show. So the name certainly grabs you and it makes people think about, uh, that. this sounds like a food that's the right stuff for my dog because it goes to their instinct. It's, it's what they should be eating. That's kind of their marketing it looks like. And that's definitely it. Instinct dog food is a, higher than high, you know, premium food uh, when they go through it. Just look at their ingredients. You just like go, that is packed full of, of what the dog should have. High in the, the protein, good quality proteins, different proteins in there. Um, and then a really good variety of a well-balanced diet for a dog. And they have it for, we have it in the store for a cat as well. And the same thing goes. Um, this is when you want to go to this food, check it out on the web, come into our store. Or we'll go through the bag with you and all that kind of stuff. It is a really interesting, unique brand that takes it to a whole level and you will see it in your dog even more and the quality that of, of life that it gives your dog. Um, you will feed less of it. You will 
pick up less poop and all that kind of a thing as well. Um, Instinct, though, takes it to a whole new level. You can even uh, introduce their frozen foods on top of that. So now Instinct frozen foods is not cooked. And you go, well, what's the benefit of that? Well, it's just like what we learn about vegetables and other things. When you cook them, that changes the molecular levels of these uh, foods and uh, some of the nutrients goes away. So they have it in a frozen variety. And that usually is just mix it in with the kibble kind of a thing. They even have soft kibbles in there uh, so that they cook most of the kibbles, but then they leave some of them soft. It's because they didn't cook them at that high temperature. The frozen, not cooked. Then they even have dehydrated products. So it's a really cool brand that lets you really mix it up for your dog and get into a lot of good quality ingredients cooked in different ways so that they can get all of the nutrients out. I'm telling you, this is like more variety than we have for our own foods. It's just amazing what is happening in the dog food and cat food industry right now. So Instinct has taken that all to a whole new level, and you want to check it out. Sounds like it. And if you want to talk to someone about uh, quality dog foods, talk to someone at Petland of Iowa City. Instinct, what might be right for you. There's lots of other great brands as well, and you can learn more about the benefits to your dog. That's Ron Salzrud. I'm Jay Caper. This has been the Positively Petland Show. We are out of time. Fun show as always, Ron. We'll talk to you next time around. Bye. See ya.